Good afternoon and welcome to Lunchtime Shares with Kim and Brits, proudly powered by Leadership by Design, where we aim to add value to people's lives. You can listen to us live every Wednesday and Thursday at lunchtime on ebizradio.com and uh, all your major podcast channels today. If you are seeing this or listening to this, I want to challenge you to go out and add some value to someone's lives today. We certainly need more people in the world who add value and uh, be kinder to one another, guys. And with that said, joining me for today's conversation, uh, we've had her on the show a number of times already, speaking about the wonderful work and industry neutral growth skills, that very long one. <laughs> uh, Co-owner and director of Rain Tree Business Coaching, Angela Healy. How are you doing, Ange? How's it, Kevin? It's lovely to be back here. I'm actually a bit sad. We're at the last of the wings and um, I've loved this journey. I have just loved exploring them and, and understanding them better and recognizing how important they actually are in my life and in my clients' lives. So, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for introducing us to the wings and writing your book. And, um, and thank you for letting us delve even deeper into, into the wings over the last few months. It's been, it's been a fabulous journey. So very excited that we are doing attention management today. Yeah, guys. So, I mean, if you go back into lunchtime series, you'll see there's a number of one, a uh, number of episodes speaking about uh, creativity, critical thinking, social intelligence, self-management. And today we're looking at attention management uh, and those five primary skills are what Walter van der Felder, who really did the study on the wings, um, brought to our attention. Um, and we've just had a wonderful couple of months unpacking this and really creating more clarity on what that is. And as Ange just mentioned now, um, today is about attention management. And so when you and I spoke about this, um, you've actually written about it recently. Um, but you 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 took reference from someone. So I'm going to ask you to please share that with us because I think it's a good sort of introduction to what we are talking about today. Absolutely. So Kev, I, um, I subscribe to uh, James Clear who wrote um, Atomic Habits. I subscribe to his weekly newsletter. And um, he, just by chance, I was reading the newsletter and there was this statement by James Clear and um i just loved it um because it for me so perfectly describes attention management so can i read it for you please please so, james clear said arguably the most important skill is controlling your attention this goes beyond merely avoiding distractions the deeper skill is finding the highest and best use for your time given what is important to you more than anything else, controlling your attention is about being able to figure out what you should be working on and identifying what truly moves the needle. For me, that describes attention management perfectly. Yeah, I, and I love that because we're, what's interesting also when you watch, you know, when you see Walter van der Felder reference to this, he doesn't reference it to time management. And I think, you know, as a general conversation, and I find it in so many corporate environments where people are just busy with their busyness and they they can't manage time and times, are, you know, and I think uh, he's what he's really done and uh, what's really showcasing even to the points of, of James Clear here. It's not about the time. It's about how you manage you. Uh, and there's a bunch of considerations that you can start taking into consideration. One of the things that we chatted about is, uh, off the bat is situational awareness, right? So where where are you and uh, does your is your environment conducive to uh, paying attention to what it needs you, what you need to be doing right now? Um, the people you're spending time with, the the what are the digital interruptions that you had? So situational situational awareness, I think, really ties into are you finding yourself in an environment when you know you've got to get something done is are you aware of where you're at and you know where you're finding yourself and how aware are you so, so kev for me it's even broader than that you know in business we talk a lot about what is my strategy and where am i going situational awareness for me is being aware of this work i'm doing is it contributing to what my strategic priorities and intention are if i'm getting bogged down in the day-to-day -day waffle waffle 
that is not contributing to where we are intending to go and grow, then I need to be re um, focusing. I need to be realigning my thinking. So, yes, it's about what's going on around me, who am I dealing with, what are the priorities today. But it's also about continually having, having situational awareness of where are we today, where are we going to, and where should I be putting my attention so that when I get there, I get there in the most effective, most efficient, and most powerful way possible. Because it's not like the world's going to get quieter from a data, information, noise, distractions level. So, so we've got to continually be aware of our situation. We've got to be aware of what it is that we are doing and how we're doing it and what is happening in the broader world and what our intention is about where we want to go with, with what it is we're doing. We've got to become so much more purposeful about every single thing that we do because the time is just going to in that there is a little bit of time management for me because I have to realize that time is no longer this resource that has to be managed. Time is this, this resource that I've got to work with and I've got to get the best benefit out of. So it's, it's almost a partnership with time instead of this, um, you know, it used to be well, there are eight hours in a day and I must get out what needs to be done in eight hours. It's, it's not that anymore. There is always going to be more than eight hours work to be done in eight hours. And it's yeah. about how am I going to create greatest impact, greatest effect, greatest steps forward towards what our strategy and our priorities. And if it's my personal life, greatest benefit with the time I spend with my daughter, time I spend with my husband. So just to add to that, Ange, I think that speaks so perfectly like to what you were saying around alignment, right? In in for example, the the prioritization and the situational awareness around why we're having this conversation is because we're also we've also uh, collaborated to create a, a wonderful program around the wings conversation. That's why you and I both as business owners, we know that we have to prioritize this conversation. And yesterday when we, when we unpacked this, we found time to make sure that we get this done, right? Because yes. it's in alignment with what's coming up and what's coming up in the next two, three, four months from now. Uh, and that's, you know, a program that that's spe uh, specifically we're speaking to the wings, right? So, uh, exactly. And I like that you've, you've attached that alignment to it. Another one, uh, you know, ties into this conversation is prioritization, uh, which you, you've already sort of alluded to, uh, which also needs to be, you know, we as individuals of, of our um, leaders of our lives need the intention, need the intention of what needs prioritization, what needs to happen today, uh, what needs to happen this week and what hap what could happen next week. It's the whole delete, deferred, um, uh, delegate and do kind of principles, the four Ds. Um, but essentially, we have to, again, bring us back to that awareness of what needs prioritization right now. And I think a lot of people just go through the motions of their day and they don't really pay attention to those priorities. Um, and that's very, very important. Well, if we want to be healthy, whole human beings, Kev, which of course you and I both believe is possible, despite the increased complexity, the increased busyness, the increased information that is out there. If we want to, as human beings, survive and thrive, because I am a great believer, I don't want to just be a survivor, because that doesn't make me happy. I want to thrive. And if I want to and need to thrive, I have to prioritize. I have to make those difficult decisions about, well, actually, no, this is not a priority because it isn't moving the dial. This is actually something that is just busyness. And um, mm. it's actually being able to take a look at me and go, I'm overwhelmed at the moment. Now, overwhelmed for me often indicates that I'm not prioritizing as effectively as I should. And normally, that's because I haven't taken the time to have a moment, look at the situations I'm in, look at myself, look at my world, take that pause, 
breathe, consider what is the most important thing for me to do to move the dial, to get move forward. What I will also be upfront about is I'm a little bit of a control freak, just, just a little. <laughs> and often um, what I end up doing is taking on stuff that I shouldn't be taking on, Kev. Um, mm. so, so that delegate, that um, destroy or get rid of, it's an important, important step in the process. And of course, um, as you, I'm sure you're going to get to, that is the third step in our process, which is about this mindful engagement. Because what is a priority today might not be the priority tomorrow. Firstly, because I might have done a whole lot of work that needed to be done. But secondly, yeah. and this is something that we have to get really fit at in this new world, things change. Our need to be agile, you know, the agile model has been around for a long time now and it gets used in certain areas within business very, very successfully. But it is now almost more important to get it across all areas of business where we are regularly mindfully evaluating okay, so this is how much there is that's going on. Is this still as relevant as, as, as higher priority? Um, yeah. does, is it something I have to do? And that continual revisiting, changing, shifting is critical. Ironically, and I know Leonie and I had a really, Leonie's my business partner, and we had a really um, intense conversation about this because often it's being mindful also of when I'm too easily distracted. Yeah. And I'm not giving the dedicated time that it needs, that is needed for the subject or for the topic or for what needs to be done. Um, I had a day yesterday where I was just in meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting. And I got to the end of the day and I felt completely overwhelmed. In fact, I felt very panicked. Now, Leonie will say to you that's very unusual for me. She thinks I manage my attention incredibly well. And, and I think I am mostly quite good at it. But yesterday I had a lot of work that needed to be delivered. And I had created zero time to give it proper focus and attention. And in a strange way, it's that balancing of knowing when I need to let go and move on and also knowing when does it need dedicated, focused time for me to be able to get into it and give it the, 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 the attention that it needs for it to be the best possible quality the first time. So it's quite a, it's quite a juggle for me. Um, and yesterday, I think I, I dropped some balls. But... Um, I also think that's part of, of this this world that we've got to be at peace with. Sometimes it is a juggle and sometimes you get it right and sometimes you get it less right and sometimes you get it flat out wrong. Um, so, <laughs> you know, um, I, I think even that resilience to be able to bounce back when you had a bad day yesterday. Okay, so how am I going to do it today? So it's a little bit better and my attention management um, delivers better results for myself my business, my family, um, all, all of the various aspects of our lives. Another one that, that, that was really interesting when we spoke about it yesterday was the conditional distraction that we don't notice. So we're so conditioned by always, you know, as soon as you have the alert or the notification on your phone, you pick up your phone and you, and you look at it. Or you see that um, while you're in a conversation, there's an email coming through and you get a notification. Um, we're so conditioned by our distraction that we do, we are not mindful enough to kind of go, hang on, let me just pay attention to, or, or let me understand that in my busyness, that I need to I need to get away from the digital distraction. I need to be in an environment that is maybe a little bit quieter. I need to I need to be far more consciously aware about the unconscious habits that I've created around distraction because I think we we it's almost like a pitfall that we we do then kind of go well this is part of my life this is how I always run my business or this is how I always run my day uh, and to take a hard look at yourself and kind of go 
hang on, let me just pay attention to like what is working and what is not working. And I mean, people are, you know, I think of even your emotional state, you know, when you've had a really hard conversation or a difficult moment with someone, how even your emotional state can become a detractor of your attention when you get caught up in the, in the motions with someone and how your mood will influence your productivity. Right. Again, bringing it back to that mindfulness. So I think that unconditional kind of uh, habit form processes, yes. we don't pay attention to them enough. And, and they and they um, they really speak to our needs as well. Right. Which we'll get to. But I'm like, so, how have so you also I, noticed about the additional distractions? So, so Kevin, it's, it's such a valuable point, because the truth is, is that all of us have our little habits that distract us. Now, I don't know how often you've considered when I'm in something, then I get distracted. How long does it take for you to get back into what it was you were busy with at the same level of clarity, uh, kind of quality, uh, intensity? It always takes yeah. me longer than I think it's going to take. And yeah. And so the, the need for me to recognize what are the things I distract myself with. Now, we know that digital distractions are very, very prevalent. You know, um, oh, I'm just going to quickly check what's going on because I've got a notification from Instagram or from uh, Facebook. or And it's that quick, but we don't look at the cost of it in then getting back into the work that we, we need to get into. Sometimes, though, we also find that it kind of gives us a little bit of a break. And sometimes we need that break, especially if we're struggling. That's where we should almost kind of prioritize a little bit of distraction, is where we're trying to put attention into something, but it doesn't matter what we do. It's... Um, not it's sticky and it's not working and and i can't get the words out or i can't express it well maybe then we should be honoring the the power of a distraction and taking 10 or 15 minutes but making them intentional making them focused and then when we come back we use the investment we've made to break and we get back in and we do it properly so, so attention management is, is such a beautifully powerful conversation piece because sometimes it's also just recognizing now is not the time. Now is not the time for me to be doing this writing or to be developing this content or for me to have this conversation because I'm actually not in the best possible space I can be in to, to be able to handle this because I'm uptight or I'm... Um, it's not, I haven't got it right in my head yet, or I've got to do some more thinking, or I've got to go and find some more information out. Now, if we honor the power of attention management, it is just as important for us to take a step back and go, this isn't working. Let me park it. Let me come back to it a little bit later. And a little bit later, you must have the maturity to be able to go, well, the deadline is, is tomorrow, so I better do it at six o'clock tomorrow morning. But yeah. often just giving it at six o'clock, you're done by 6.30. While yeah. if you don't give yourself that opportunity, what you end up in is a situation where you, you just, um, you struggle and struggle and something that should take you half an hour has taken you three hours. That is bad attention management. That is not honoring the fact that we need to be highly productive in the time and the, and the effort that we invest. I think uh, to to exactly your point here is I, I don't think people understand how much they can accomplish if they simply are more intentional about how they manage their attention, and you know it becomes an empowering tool uh, kit as part of your toolbox to kind of go, you know, I know that uh, I need so many hours to get this done, so many hours to get that done. I mean, yesterday with our conversation, uh, we may have spent about an hour really chatting through some stuff. Uh, and 
it, within a couple of minutes, we got to like, okay, cool. What's best for you? What's best for you? And, and kind of worked out when we would do this recording. But because we are both very intentional about where we're spending our time and how quickly can we knock this out the park, I think it becomes a really useful, empowering tool to know when you're actually managing your attention better. Um, and I think people don't, people still have this construct of, you know, I'm going to have to time, use time management. And, and I think time management has got such a bad rap to a large degree where people are like, I'm sick of managing my time, right? And it's a case of going, no, let's, let's backtrack just slightly and go, let's pay attention to your awareness. Let's pay attention to how you're managing your attention. Because that, again, brings it back to me and it's self-empowering because then I have control over it. And that speaks to one of the things that I wanted to bring up, uh, we, we spoke about yesterday, is the need for certain needs to being fulfilled, right? Um, so very often, uh, you know, I look at managers, for example, people who manage people, and very often they don't delegate, they don't defer any kind of information because they need to do it because they, they're the only ones that know how and they, they're going to get it right. But then the further, the deeper level question to that is, so if that was a human need for you, what, are you, what, do, what is that need uh, and what are the needs that you're trying to fulfill? And we know the needs are certainty, variety, significance, love and connection, contribution and growth. Um, and when you look at those six needs, you're kind of going, well, which one of those am I trying to fulfill mostly in this environment? Because sometimes we don't create a boundary. We just kind of go, well, you know, if, 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 I'm not, uh, if I'm not solving all those problems and I'm not getting to my team, then who's going to do it, right? Because that gives me a really, really big need for significance. Um, but it also creates a lot of certainty and it also creates contribution from my side. So the six human needs are also, you know, playing into this, this need to understand what are you doing with your attention? Because when you start understanding it from a, a deeper core level of your own human needs, you start understanding, am I tapping into something that I am, that's maybe out of balance and maybe not, you know, really balanced in my life. So I'm seeking the need for significance or I'm seeking the need for certainty the whole time. And that, you know, speaks to boundaries again. <laughs> so it's, yeah. it can be quite uh, like a. So, so Kev, you know, someone once said to me, a strength overplayed is a weakness. And it's the mm. same with the need. A balanced need, knowing that I need significance and managing that so that my life is fulfilled is very different from allowing a need to become such a dominant and driving force that what it ends up doing is leading to me paying inappropriate levels of attention to things that I shouldn't be. So let me explain what I'm trying to say in my complex way. I have this need for certainty. I have this need for the certainty to the point that I micro micromanage my staff. And in that, what I am completely compromising and sacrificing is my need to be able to, to have time to do the work that actually adds real value at my senior level in my organization. I compromise my time with family. I compromise my ability to have good health because my stress levels are off the charts because I'm trying to control something that is actually out of my control, which yeah. is that someone's going to do something exactly how I would do it every single time and every single way. So I end up in this situation where this need for certainty has gone to the point of, of being unhealthy and unbalanced. And in that situation, I am at high risk. So for me, the ability to take a moment and to reflect, okay, so, so what's driving my imbalance in my attention management? What's driving my in, in ability to prioritize the things that really are important? What is driving my inability to put a proper boundary in place and to say, well, actually, staff member, um, you've come to me with a problem, 
please go away, take a day, come up with two suggestions on how you think you can solve it and come and speak to me with those suggestions. Instead of me saying, okay, give it to me and I'll come back to you and sort it out for you in two days time. Now, what's fascinating is, is that a manager who is a good leader and a leader who's a good manager understands one of the key responsibilities is empowering others. Yeah. Someone who is just a manager and doesn't lead thinks that they have to do everything themselves and that because that's about perfection and it's about process. Okay. Yeah. And what gets lost in that is their capacity to lead themselves and their teams and to empower others because it's about control instead of about building capacity. And I, I just, attention management, the ability to teach your self-attention management and the ability to teach your staff attention management ends up becoming one of those truly powerful skills because what your staff go out and do is that they start getting situational awareness. Instead of just coming to you and saying, dump, I dump the problem on you, they start becoming aware of what is happening in their environment. What can they suggest that could fix this? What would take the biz their, situ their area of responsibility in the business, what would take it forward? It allows them to start prioritizing that, well, maybe this is not a priority right now. Maybe X, Y, and Z is a priority. Finally, it allows for them to mindfully engage what is happening and to make good suggestions and ultimately to become a lot more independent now, isn't that the starting point of building future leaders? Exactly. And, and you know, to your point uh, around, because uh, you've literally just taken all of them and kind of combined them and really showed us that they're all connected when we are, when we're paying attention to the mindfulness, the prioritization, the situational awareness, and all of them in combination to that. And you're really upskilling and teaching people how to attention manage. Um, you know, it's uh, one of the things that we, before we, we end off today, one of the things that also that we spoke about yesterday is that is that feel good hormone that kicks into, you know, when we get the notification, it feels like someone's paying attention. So our dopamine, our serotonin, endorphins, our oxytocin, all of our hormones that are connected to making us feel good, we, we there's science to show that, you know, when I get that notification, when I get someone paying attention to me or someone thanking me for doing something or my team doing the best in the organization, it, it gives me a, a burst of feel good hormones. And that's really cool. And that's wonderful that you get that. But at an unhealthy level of maybe certainty or significance or contribution or growth, at an unhealthy level that you could make that all about you constantly. And you have, it's almost, uh, you often find that people, uh, it comes across like people are trying to fill a void. I want to quickly tell that story that I shared with, with, uh, with you yesterday with the executive around his financial director at a large pharmaceutical. And he... Um, he wouldn't delegate. He just, he wouldn't delegate. He didn't have staff members. He said, well, you know, I'm very busy. I work 16 hours a day. Um, but he came to me because he needed work-life balance. And I, you know, unpacking a lot of, you know, critical questions around, you know, uh, what's happening in his world. Eventually, we went to the human needs. I said, okay, cool. Let's do the human needs exercise. Um, and strangely enough, his significance was the highest out of all of his needs. So I said to him, well, can you see that you've made yourself so significant within your environment that no one else can do what you can do, that you don't even have a team that you can delegate to defer information or projects to because you're the go-to guy? And then I asked him, so what's your relationship with your family? And he was like, well, they all grown up and they're doing their own things and we don't really have. I said, when last did you go on a date night? He's like, well, no, I, I don't remember said, so do you have any significance in your family space? And he said, no, he's, you know, they're all grown up and they're doing their own thing. They all have their lives. And suddenly when he was hearing himself speak through it like that, he was also seeing and realizing how his, his, although his significance was really being fed in his work environment, he was getting no significance in his home life. So for him, he was just doing what made him feel good. 
uh, because he was getting those those feel good hormones kicking in because his work life was really working to to make him feel like someone. Um, and we literally get we came up with an action plan for him to start changing how he engaged with his family and how he engaged with his uh, with his son and his daughter and what practical little things he could start doing to really feel more connected. And suddenly when he started doing that, after a month or two, he started working less instinctively. He started putting boundaries in place. He started taking, being more disciplined for, you know, closing the laptop at six o'clock and kind of going, okay, cool, let's go for dinner. Um, I even think uh, at the end of the process that we went through, he, um, him and his wife took up tango lessons or something where they were literally, they went out dancing every second Thursday or something like that. So just a practical kind of example to share that, you know, um, when we find ourselves, you know, at the mercy, and I'm going to use that in, in inverted commas, of, of not paying attention to what we're paying attention to, it can be a debilitator and disable us quite quickly. Um, and uh, we don't generally get to the success that we want to get to based on the fact that we're not paying so much attention to things as, as we could be. So I'm always a believer that we get indicators, we get signs. Yeah. And those signs generally come up with a feeling of discontent or unhappiness or a kind of just dissatisfaction. And for me, often when a human need is out of, either I'm not getting enough of a human need met or an, a human need is being over it's gone into overdrive in a specific yeah. area. The consequence of that will indicate for me that my attention management around that has not been well managed. And I need to, and, and for me, Kevin, it's easy for us to talk about, oh, I must pay more attention to this. Yeah. But let's be honest, those first few times that he went on a date night, he probably sp spent a fair amount of time not really knowing what to say to his wife and it's yeah. uncomfortable. So when we put boundaries in place, the first few times of us putting boundaries in place, it feels uncomfortable. We've got to be at peace with that because when, as with any situation, when you are practicing a new skill, it's awkward. It requires learning, relearning sometimes what it is that I had a while back. And the gift of, of the boundary is that we honor it, we stick to it, and we see it through. Understanding, of course, that sometimes, even with boundaries, we've got to be a bit agile, that today I'm going to flex, and then I'll go back to my normal boundary tomorrow. And for me, that is the art of attention management. It's that ability to make the human, uh, or to 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 apply human thinking and analysis and interpretation to a situation that allows me to make the best possible decision and to continually improve and continually achieve even more and better than I was before. And I was I was just about to ask you, can you summarize today's conversation? <laughs> and I think that's exactly what you just I did. I think so. that's it, yeah. That is, I, and, I, and I love that. And I, you know, last point that I just want to emphasize yesterday when we spoke is you used the phrase boundaries being a, 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 an empowered way of living your life. You mentioned boundaries empowering people. And I think that's, we often, you know, I often find that people kind of think that putting a boundary in place means I've got to fight with someone. And, you know, we've got to have a really difficult conversation. But actually, you know, what, what you're doing is you're allowing for that person to know where you're at, but you're also giving yourself permission to, to say, this is what I'm capable of. This is what I'm comfortable with. Um, and it, it becomes a very empowering position and a very disciplined position for you to kind of go, this is okay, this is not okay. Uh, are we on the same page? Um, and that creates enormous clarity for both parties. But when we don't do that, we, we, we allow for people to, you know, to manage our attention and we allow for people to step over that boundary. I and mean, then that, again, becomes a debilitator. So, you know, I think there's, there's so much to this conversation. I think we could have another half an hour's conversation. I agree. 
But, you know, Kev, my last point is, is that when we don't manage our attention, we also pay attention to the wrong things. And in that moment, we're not the best that we can be. Because if I'm a senior manager and I'm spending a whole lot of time watching data capturing, there's something wrong. Um, exactly. And sometimes what I do with my clients is I say to them, OK, so this work, give me an hourly rate that you believe this work is worth. And they'll say to me, oh, probably 250 rand an hour. I say, OK, and let, let's look at the strategy work that you are required to deliver on because that's what you held accountable for. No, that's 850 rand an hour work. I say, and yeah. how? now let's look at the amount of your split in your day. How much attention are you paying to 250 rand an hour work? And it flabbergasts people how often they are paying attention to the wrong stuff. Exactly. <laughs> Guys, so if you want to know more, uh, myself, uh, Leadership by Design and Raintree Business Coaching, we are, we've collaborated on putting together a wonderful, I'm referring to it as a high performing teams program, uh, just because I think, you know, at that level, when you know the wings to that degree, it really impacts teams in a whole different way at looking at, you know, how creative they are, how critical they are, how socially intelligent they are, and, and really even to attention management. But, I mean, uh, we are currently putting that together. So if you want to find more out about that, please check out our LinkedIn's, uh, get in touch, uh, and we'll uh, let's make it happen because uh, we are – we're very passionate about the wings. And I was telling Angela yesterday that, <laughs> that uh, she's one of the only people that's like, like really gets what I'm trying to, to say about it. So thanks, Ange. Thanks for having this conversation. Guys, if you want to know more, it's uh, she's one of the directors of Raintree Business Coaching. And uh, that's Angela Healy on LinkedIn. Uh, and you can just, uh, you can Google and you can LinkedIn me as well. And thank you so much for chatting. And I will chat to you soon. Thanks so much, Kevin. It was lovely as per usual. And um, yeah, we'll speak soon. Cheers, Cheers Kevin. Cheers for now. Ciao, bye.